So our next example, our parametric equation, the x is going to be a cos t. Actually, let's get crazy. That's too normal. Let's go uh, a sine t. And y will be a cos t. And we'll go t between 0 and pi. All right, so I want a graph of this. And how are we going to graph? Um, clueless method. Clueless method, or plug and chug. <laughs> However you want to go. All right, so graph this out. There's n not too many nice angles in there. Obviously, none of them are integers, but you're going to go like 0. You can just go 0, pi over 4, pi over 2, 3, pi over 4, pi. You don't have to do the thirds and the sixths. Just do the pi over, multiples of pi over 4. <laughs> Elephants are my favorite animals. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a joke. Strongly recommend you at least pet elephant. Hopefully like, feed it. Do you like elephant ears? They're pretty good. Yeah, but those are totally different. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird if you say, do you want to have an elephant tusk? That's very different than would you like an elephant ear? <laughs> I don't know what value A is. I assumed it's positive the way I graphed it. If it was negative, it would look a little different. It would be a vertical, actually be both a vertical and a horizontal reflection. So I assumed A is greater than 0. So let me write that in here, my assumption. If it, A is negative, it would look quite a bit different. It would still be half a circle, but it would be a very different half of the circle and oriented a different way. So any questions on that graph? So sine of zero is zero times a is zero. Oh, because that's. I kind of skip. Okay. Yeah, I kind of skip that step. Okay. Okay, so there's our graph. Now <clears throat> I want to convert this to rectangular. So what steps did I recommend last time? Elimination is okay. Substitution, basically solve for, you are eliminating t, but you solve for t in one equation and plug it into the other. You can go that route right here. However, solving for t will give you a sine inverse or a cos inverse, and then you plug in the other one, you'll have like a cosine of a sine inverse or a sine of a cos inverse, which hopefully you spent last quarter plus pre-calculus two class simplifying. 
trig function of an inverse trig function. So that should not be something too difficult to do now. So instead of going the substitution route, let's just try to be extra clever. So normally I would say substitution will work and that's normally the best way to go, uh, but not necessarily all the time. What is another option to get the t variable out of here? Well, I can't choose a value of A. So I'll write down something that you should remember, or should have remembered. So here's one way to get rid of T. I have to do a little work, though, in order to get. <coughs> so I could write this as sine T squared. How do I turn this into a sine t? What do I multiply this whole equation by? Almost. A squared. Because I need to get the a inside the square. So I need an a squared in order to move it in and distribute all three parts of this equation. So you're going to find that I skip more and more steps the further we go here. Oh, what did I, I forgot to multiply the right side by A, the easy one. I'm going to skip more and more algebra steps the further we go in calculus class. And if you're in differential equations, we'll skip more steps there as well. So there, we almost eliminated it. T. Uh, now, all we're going to do, A sine t, just looking up, is x. So we got x squared plus a cos t is y squared equals a squared. And that should be a familiar equation of a circle with the radius a centered at 0, 0. So there's our rectangular equation right there. <coughs> now remember, the information you lose is basically what portion of the curve you're at using and what orientation the curve has. So if I graph the circle, it would just basically cover up. I wouldn't see the direction, and I wouldn't see the part of the curve I was using. So in some sense, you lose some information when you convert to rectangular. Is rectangular the same as like the Cartesian? Curve? Yes, rectangular is Cartesian. And then the, the other main coordinate system is polars, which we're going to use pretty soon as well. And I don't think we get into three dimensions. Maybe we do. You go to spherical and uh, a spherical or cylindrical after if you go into three dimensions. Were you trying to write in between the lines? I remember <coughs> yesterday at the beginning of class you showed us how you started writing bigger and bigger as you got flattered and back. You wanted us to remind you. Oh, yeah, I have the, uh, I think I am writing bigger. I'll, I'll shrink back down. I'll try to fit more stuff on the screen without pushing other stuff off the screen. But that's not possible so much. We only have one screen. All right, where are we going next? Last example. All right. So we're going to write an equation for a point on a circumference of a disk rolling across a surface. So one way to think about that, if you looked at the uh, inflation valve on your tire and you wanted to know the position of that as your car is moving. So it's almost going to have a circular motion, except it's also going to be moving horizontally, so it will sort of look like a spiral. So we're going to write an equation for that. So let's lay out the example. So we're going to find a parametric. equation for position of a point on 
the circumference of a disk with a radius A rolling across a surface at speed pi a so <clears throat> we have an x equation and a y equation to find or a horizontal and a vertical motion equation do you think it'll be easier to figure out the vertical motion or horizontal motion So, so vertical will be a little easier because we can ignore the horizontal speed. So we think about the way that this wheel is moving. If you just pay attention to the vertical, it's just going up and down. It doesn't matter that it's actually moving horizontally. So let's go focus on the vertical uh, equation first, and then we'll worry about the horizontal afterwards. Uh, this problem is written without uh, paying attention to where the point starts. So where do we, where would be the easiest place, let's draw the initial diagram here. Where would be an easy place to start this? The There's four reasonable choices. Well, remember the middle of the circle is not a point on the circumference. Oh, right, okay, okay. Don't, don't do that. So there's four reasonable choices. I think these are all four right here. I'm tempted to go with the one on the right or the one, it doesn't really matter which one we go with. Let's go with the one on the right of the wheel. It doesn't really matter which one we start with. So let's start right here. Now, <clears throat> let's draw our axes in. I could either go with the ground as the x-axis. I think that's a reasonable thing to do. Take the ground as the x-axis, which means at height 0, our point will be on the ground. And then the y-axis. We can choose where that goes. I'm going to just choose to start it right at the initial place where that point is. So our initial x coordinate would be 0 in this case. So let's start it right there. There are some important pieces of information on the wheel. You need to know the radius, r. So the radius is r. If I go another r, I have the diameter. So what is my initial height of this point? So we're going vertical first. What's my initial height? So yeah, our initial, oh yeah, I don't know why I'm using r. A is what's in the problem. So we have a and a. So we're looking for a y of t function. One thing I know, y of 0. The way I have it laid out, y0 should be a. We're starting at height a. <coughs> so the problem we just did is related to this problem. Let's think about the one we just looked at. This will give us circular motion right here. So we're going to use trig functions. And our we may or may not go with sine or cos. We may go with sine for x or cosine for x, and vice versa for y. Let's think about what makes sense here. So, first of all, what range of values do I expect to see out of the vertical uh, position? So, our range of y of t is zero to two a. So, the ample one. One way to think about this, the amplitude is a. The amplitude of this trig function is going to be a. And it's going to have a vertical offset or a shift up by a. So it's going to be shifted up a, and it's going to have an amplitude of a. So let's try guess and check. Let's just try the cosine function. How about that?
So I'm just going to guess it's probably a cos t, and then I did a plus a to boost it up by a. If I don't do that plus a, uh, it will go between negative a and positive a. So I shifted it up a, so it's the lowest it'll be is 0, and the highest it'll be is 2a. All right, what is cosine of 0? So cos 0 is 1. This means my initial height would be 2a right here. That's not terribly good. No, we do need to do a, <coughs> a cos something, but it doesn't have to be cos t. I can offset this a little bit. The other option is I, I can just use the sine function. Sine starts at 0. Does sine increase or decrease after you pass 0? It increases. What is going to happen to the height as the wheel starts to move to the right? It's going to decrease. So let's try negative, so negative a sine t plus a. Let's try that. So this y t didn't work. So we'll try y of 0. And we get a. All right, so it matches at one point, so we must have the right function. No, we should probably try a little more. How far would the wheel have to move for this point to hit the ground? It's a little bit tricky. How far would the wheel have to roll for that point to be on the ground? So related to a circumference. A divided by two. Use the word circumference. One quarter, one quarter circumference. Quarter circumference. We'll put that point on the ground, right? So let's think about what does it take to get a quarter of the circumference? What is the circumference of this circle? 2 pi. 2 pi. 2 a. 2 a pi? Yeah. Circumference is pi d, so it's pi times 2 a, or 2 a pi. So when it rolls forward, Rules, rules, forward. Two pi a over four, which is pi a over two. Will be z the height will be zero. This will be the first time the height will be zero. It won't hit the ground before this. It'll hit the ground right at this distance. Does this tell me what t value this should happen at? This unfortunately doesn't tell me the t value. So what I have to do is figure out, based on the speed, how much time elapses before I go this distance. So now we're going to have to use our uh, speed. So I think our speed was pi a. <coughs> so speed is pi pi a. Wait, that's not right. So speed is distance over time. So I don't know the time. I do know the distance. So the distance is pi a over 2. That's our distance. I don't know t. And I know our speed is pi a. So solve for t here. So we are relating our speed, our distance, and our time. We know everything except time. So all we're doing is finding time right now.
Oh, what am I doing? That's really bad. What did I mess up? That's one, it's, that's one half. Exactly right. <laughs> oh, fractions. All right, so t is one half. Okay, so now I know the t value, and we just said that y of this t value should be zero. So y of 1 half better equals 0. So we got an issue right here. When I plug in t is 1 half, I have no idea what sign of 1 half is. So we're going to need to scale our input right here. So what I'm doing is I'm multiplying t by a number b. <clears throat> it's definitely going to be some multiple of pi. So we're going to use this instead. Now I can write y of 1 half equals negative a sine b times 1 half plus a. And we said that this better equals 0. Now the tricky part, we're going to solve for b. So it's time to show off your algebra skills. I'll give you a big hint. Well, what would be a good thing to multiply by? How can I get rid of the a's? 1 over a. Multiply 1 over a. And then your a's are going to disappear. And then you should be able to tell me what B is after that. What is sine inverse of 1? Pi over 2. It is pi over 2. You could do this without inverting sine up above if you know sine of one, uh, pi over 2 is 1. So you can do this without inverting sine as well. So multiply 2, we got pi equals b. So we scaled our time. We can write down our latest version. So negative a sine pi t plus a. So let's stick with this right here. It's a good y of t function. So unless we made a mistake, this works at time 0, and it works at time 1 half. What would you expect our height to be at time 1? So at time 1, we should have rotated another quarter rotation, and our height should be back to A. And if I did uh, 3 halves, I should be at the top of the circle. So let's check the top of the circle and see what we get. So any questions on why we should be at the top at 3 halves? It's basically a half second for each quarter rotation. So we're going to go 3 quarter rotations. All right, so check that. Make sure that our function works.
so we're at the top of the circle and we are not doing the clueless method, meaning we know a lot about the sine function and how it works. So with the intuition we have, this should be enough to convince you this should make it oscillate from top to bottom the right way. We got the right initial and it seems to make sense at the other time values. So let's move on to the uh, horizontal position now. So horizontal position is a lot like the vertical position. It's going to do some oscillation. Why is it a little bit more than just the oscillation back and forth? So we got one motion is going back and forth, and the other one is generally moving forward. So it's going forward, but also in this kind of oscillating forward motion, which I'm moving my hand, and you can't see on the video. But it's kind of, <laughs> depending on how this radius of the, actually, We'll go on, maybe we'll graph this out, but <coughs> let's figure out this horizontal position. So this is a reasonable starting point right here. The only difference is it may not be sine, and we may need to offset it by something a little different. So that's the main difference right here. So let's think about the horizontal position. Let's not worry about the um, actual forward motion. Let's just think of the oscillating motion, the horizontal back and forth. Uh, so our initial at t0, we actually have 0, which makes me want to use a sine function. However, kind of wish we set up the y-axis a little differently. Where it is set up, it might be better to think about the way that this point's going to move. If, if we were on ice spinning our wheels, so if we, not, if we rotate our tire without actually moving, well, if you're on ice, you're not going to waste your tires too much. Uh, but it's basically going to go back and then forth and then back and then forth like that. Plus, with burnouts, you'd be decreasing the radius of the tire. Yeah. <laughs> Which would make this a whole lot more complicated, so let's not do that. As soon as you buy your first set of tires, you'll be done doing burnouts. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> All right, so forget about this thing moving forward. I think cosine would be a good choice because cosine basically starts on the right side of the circle. Which way would cosine normally rotate around? It would normally go that way. However, just think about the horizontal position. It doesn't matter which way you're going to rotate around the circle. Another way to think about it, cosine's even. So it doesn't matter which way I rotate. My x coordinate is going to move the same way. So let's go with cosine. So this is going to be our x of t function. Let's hope we can just use the sca same scaling factor of pi t. That's what we got last time. So there could be a multiple in front. And there could be an offset right there. So what is x of 0? What is our initial horizontal position? A. Horizontal position. Look where I put the y-axis. Zero. 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 So our initial position will be zero. And it doesn't matter how fast we're going. At the initial position, we're going to be here. I can't uh, I'd be really careful as this thing starts to move, because I can't just, uh, I have to account for the horizontal motion as well as the rotational motion. Can but quick, yeah. there, where is zero, zero? Right down there okay, at the origin. So I have y-axis and x-axis. I could have oriented it differently, but I just chose this one, so we're going to go with it. Thank you. It's a sunken cost fallacy in economics.
All right, cos zero is one. Actually, let's go with little a right here. I think we'll just use that. All right, we said this better equals zero. So what does big B have to equal? Negative A. Negative A is B. So our initial offset is minus A. All right, so if we went with this, <laughs> we would be writing the equation where we're doing burnouts or spinning on ice. So what do I have to do to this to actually get that forward motion, account for that forward motion that we're going to get? So it's going to be plus. So this is, uh, we didn't talk about acceleration right here. So this has no acceleration. It's just, just going to have a velocity. It's a, traveling at a constant speed. Uh, so we don't have to worry about the velocity or the speed changing. So it's going to be uh, basically velocity or speed times a. So it's going to be spe or <laughs> speed times time. So at time zero, we're going to be zero offset. And then as time increases, we'll be moving constantly to the right. Now, because I'm making a new function, I should probably give this a different name. This function has a different name. What's a good thing to do here? Do want to erase? Let's call this capital X. How about that? And call this new function capital X. So we're making a new function accounting for this. And I think we got our initial speed was pi a. a. Yeah. So there's our x of t, our original y of t. What was that? Negative a sine pi t minus a, was it minus a or plus a? Plus a. All right. So there's our parameterized x and our parameterized y. Is this something you did in physics last quarter? <laughs> kind of. We might just start with a similar set of equations. Oh, I was lost the whole time. All right, excellent. Yep. My work is done. <laughs> All right, so that's the end of 11.1. .1. So 11.2, we're going to do. It'll be more like the homework problems. So whatever I put in the homeworks, it'll be something more similar to that. Which there definitely will be homework problems like the previous examples. I think there are some modeling uh, equations like this where you have to model some situation that will probably have two dimensions. Um, what would happen if the radius was changing? In case we were doing a burnout. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're in really soft tires, so they burned out at a rate that was non-trivial. Um, your, let's see, well, it depends on how much grip you have and all that stuff. Um, if you're not moving, I think your. It would have to depend on the axle speed, too, if that's changing or not. Yeah, you'd have to know a lot of stuff. But basically, you're, I mean, if I drew it out, if it would basically kind of spiral in like that. I mean, depending on how much, if you got down and burning out your metal rim. <laughs> <laughs> but then your point disappears. <laughs> your point's going to be sitting on the road <laughs> if you do that. <laughs> that, that, won't, that point won't exist if you do a burnout. 
It would basically get more complicated. You need more information. So let's get into some calculus now. So last section was more geometrical. This is going to be more, this is going to be calculus. So this one will feel a lot more algebraic. So we got a plane curve. So just like the last section, it will get some uh, x of t. And let me use some slightly different notation. x will be, I think I used this at the beginning of the param parameterized curves. So the x coordinate will be some f function, y coordinate will be some other function, we'll call it g. All right, there's our good buddy, dy over dx. So that's our derivative y with respect to x. Unfortunately, you can't really take a derivative of this first equation with respect to, well, I could take it with respect to x, but what derivative would be natural to take on this first equation? With respect to t would be the one that makes sense right here. So let's take the only derivative that really makes any sense. Let's take a d dt. So left side is easy to write down, dx over dt. The right side, you could write it a few different ways. One way is f prime of t. I could write it as df. Uh, or d over dt of f. There's a few different ways to write it. <coughs> that would be another way to write it. Or you could write it as df over dt. So we're going to treat derivatives as fractions now. So we're going to treat this as a fraction. So I'm going to basically do algebra on differential operators. Now I need a lot more room to write. So algebraically, this would be like multiplying by 1 over dt divided by 1 over dt. So remember, as long as you treat top and bottom of your fraction the same, it's OK to multiply by, in essence, 1 right here. Um, you can also see this in the uh, chain rule. So this, this is how we're going to compute derivatives. Uh, the slope of the tangent curve, you can compute it like this. So you want rise over run, no problem. You can compute it like this. And of course, dy over dt is, <coughs> in our case, I didn't write it down, but it's basically g prime. I did write down the dx over dt. That's f prime. So when I wrote down the chain rule, I wrote down this version. When we use the chain rule, we use a slightly different looking version. But one of the ways you can write down the chain rule looks like this. And if you solve for dy dx, or dy over dx, you would basically multiply by the reciprocal of that second operator. And that would look like dy over dt divided by the reciprocal, which is, uh-oh.
oh, I'm not solving for the right thing. I want to solve for this right here. So what I'm going to do is divide by or multiply by the reciprocal. There we go. So we get dy over dt divided by dx over dt, which is dy over dx. So now we're going to get crazy and find the second derivative of y with respect to x. So we just wrote down the first derivative of y with respect to x. Now we're going to look at what is the second derivative of y with respect to x. So we're taking two derivatives of y now. So before, we just looked at this right here, just the derivative of y, the x derivative of y. Now we're going to take a derivative of the derivative. So one way to write down derivative of y with respect to x is y prime. So you think of it as dy prime over dx. And now we're going to treat it like an algebraic expression and divide the numerator and the denominator by dt. So I'll write down some of my notes. It's confusing me at the moment, but hopefully it's correct. So we'll finish, or we'll do our example, first example tomorrow. What we're going to be doing is finding tangents to parametric curves. So we're going to have parametric curves, we'll be finding tangents to them.